Bronze Study Guide, Error 3, Part 5. So question 32 is asking you about the first constitution of the United States, the first government of the United States, and asking you why it was so weak and what was the fear. The first government of our country was actually the Articles of Confederation, the, o, o, the AOC. And the Articles of Confederation, um, think about it like baseball. You know, they got a foul ball. I mean, it, it was bad. And then the, art, the articles we finally realized, you know, sucked. So we'll replace it, and then we knock it out of the ballpark with, with the Constitution. So when you come out with the Articles of Confederation, you have to realize that the colonists have just thrown off Britain, which was a mighty government. It was a strong central government. And so when they want to create a new government, they want the complete opposite of that. So think about it like when you date. You know, you have a really bad relationship with this person. You're like, oh, God, I don't want that ever again. So you go the complete opposite. And that's what the colonists basically did uh, with the Articles of Confederation. went the complete opposite of what England's government really was. So they really had a big fear of, we're going to have to fight another revolution if we make a government too powerful. The British government was super powerful. They had to fight it. And... That's fresh in their minds. They just finished the war. So you don't want a government that you're going to have to fight again. And this time, instead of it being 3,000 miles away, it's going to be right there where you live, in your backyard. Um, so they that fear makes them create a government that just isn't going to function. There's no executive. So remember when we cut up our construction worker, there's no shield. There's nothing to actually enforce the law. So you got an executive, but you don't have anyone to actually go about enforcing those laws. And you have no judicial branch. You actually have no law uh, that's going to be interpreted and determined whether it's legal or not. That's what a judicial, our, our judges, our courts are going to do. So it has no head to actually determine it. And then the legislative branch only has one cameral house, a unicameral house. Um, so... And, and to get laws passed, it was really hard. You had to have an overwhelming majority. So it's like when they made the articles, they made it so hard that it just can't work. There's no flexibility in it. And so the Articles of Confederation just suck, and so they're going to have to get rid of it. So make sure you look at your uh, notebook, your interactive notebook, and make sure you go back over this. I'm definitely going to ask you questions on it, but when you look at why we cut out the other leg and we put that little X on it, is a bicameral, two houses, they check each other, and they have different responsibilities. So you don't have that with the articles. So finally they realize it sucked, uh, and so we're going to get some um, checks to it with the Constitution. So we had a list and explained four weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. No executive, you can't interpret. Um, I'm sorry, for the executive, you can't actually enforce any laws. Um, you can't interpret any laws with no judicial branch. There's no power of the tax. Um, so you can make taxes with your legislative, but you can't really enforce them. But you have to get the consent of the people. And... When you do taxes, if you ask me, am I okay with taxes, I'm probably going to say no. You tax everybody else, not me. So if you have to get consent of the people, but remember, this was one of their big things, taxes with the revolution. It's not really going to work. And then you have to get 100% of people to approve of any changes to the articles. 100%, you're never going to get 100% approval. I mean, it just doesn't work. So this article sucks. So everything that sucked about it, they're going to fix here. So you're going to have a judicial branch. You're going to have an executive branch. You're going to have two houses in your legislative branch, your Congress. You're going to have your House of Representatives and your Senate. You're going to have a constitution that is flexible, that we call a living document. We can go back and we can look at it. We can reinterpret things. The language, the vocabulary, like, is fluid. It moves with time. Um... We have amendments that we can add to it, and you don't have to have 100% of the states to actually agree to it. So the Constitution is a far more flexible document because what it, they did was they did a problem chart. 
what are all the problems with the articles? You know, how can we fix it? And they realize they can't fix the articles. You got to throw them away. You know, this guy can't even live. So make something that can live. Created Frankenstein. Kill it. Question 34 is the accomplishments of the Articles of Confederation. Look, the article sucked, but it did do two good things, okay? The land ordinances of 1785, uh, ordinance is just the local law, and it was a way to survey and process land. Now the, the American Revolution has been won, the Treaty of Paris gives us all land to the Mississippi River. So that land that the proclamation had closed is now open, and so you do a land ordinance. You need to survey the land, and you need to process it. You need to, like, section it off so people can buy it. And that money is going to go pay for the war debt we just had with the Revolution. The Northwest Ordinance of 1787 is now that you're getting land bought and you're getting people moving out there to, like, Kentucky, Ohio and stuff, now you have to think about, well, what are we going to do with them? You know, when there's enough of them, are we going to just let them sit out there on their own? Are they just going to be territories? So what they do is they say, look, if you get to a certain population, you get a constitution, you can actually be admitted into the United States as a state, and you will be equal to the original 13. So no state is more powerful than any other state. You know, today we have 50, but this kind of sets that precedent that when we do admit new states, and we will a lot in this course, American One, we're going to get the continental United States, the 48. Um, and then in American Two, you guys are going to look at Hawaii and Alaska being admitted. But when you look at this, no state's more powerful than any other. And if anybody wants to become a state, like we do have several territories, Puerto Rico is a territory, if they want to come into the United States as the 51st state, they're more than welcome to, as long as they, you know, do the little check marks, and they will be the same as any other state. Question 35 is what was significant about Shea's rebellion? And basically Shea, Daniel Shea, caused the Constitutional Convention to happen. Um, Shea's rebellion is really wild. He's rebelling about taxes, you know, no taxation without representation and, and all this stuff is going on. And it gets really violent. And because it gets violent, they can't really put it down. There's no army. There's no standing army under the Articles of Confederation. Um, and so the states ask the federal government for help. And the federal government under the Articles is like, well, we really can't help you. We don't have the power to enforce laws. So the Founding Fathers, once again, go to a meeting, the Constitutional Convention, they look at the articles and they're like, wow, we really, we really messed up here, man. And there's no whiteout, okay? There's no whiteout back then. That doesn't get invented until later. But there's no whiteout that's enough that could fix the damage of the Articles of Confederation. So because it's total crap, get rid of it and replace it with something that's actually going to work. That's how we get the Constitution. So question 36 is constitutional compromises. And we're going to look more at the Constitution as this course goes on. But one of the first compromises is the Great Compromise. This actually creates the legislative branch. The legislative branch is bicameral. We have a United States Senate and we have a United States House of Representatives. <clears throat> so in the U.S. Senate, we have two from each state. So uh, we have 50 states, we have 100 senators. Um, and that would be the equal part. And then we have the U.S. House of Representatives. That's based on population. So every state differs on that. So it's based on however many people you have, we're going to do representation based off that. So when you look at the two house legislative branch, this was a compromise between the New Jersey and the Virginia plan. The New Jersey plan wanted a unicameral legislative house. They wanted one, and they wanted it based on equality, one vote per state. That was the Articles of Confederation. That was their legislative branch. Virginia was like, nah, what we want is a bicameral branch. We want two houses, and we want it based on population. Um, now, remember, when we talked about Virginia, it's a huge plantation state. So what do they have a whole lot of? Slaves. Now, they don't call slaves people because they call them property. Um, but conveniently, in their uh, representative plan, slaves are going to count for population. And so this becomes a big, you know, like debate on whether slaves should count for a House of Representatives. 
And eventually everything gets uh, solved by Connecticut. Connecticut steps in and saves the day with the great compromise or the Connecticut compromise. And they say, look, Jersey, you're going to get your equal representation in the U.S. Senate. We're going to do two per state. Virginia, you're going to get what you want on this population with representatives in the U.S. House of Representatives. So Jersey gets a little bit of what they want. Virginia gets a little bit of what they want, and that's why we call it a compromise, okay? Now, about that slave thing, okay? This is how they solve that representation issue. They do it with the three-fifths compromise. Now, what it means is for every five slaves, three are going to count in population. Now, that's what the Southerners get. They get higher population counts, which means they get more representatives in the initial phase of our government. So in the U.S. House of Representatives at the beginning, southern states have more representation, which is why when they try and make laws that are anti-slavery, it doesn't work because they could outvote it. But the north, the northern states get something too. They get taxation. And this is something that a lot of people forget about the three-fifths compromise. So for every five slaves, three are going to count for population and taxes. So Southerners, you get a little bit of what you want, but you also now have to pay taxes on your slaves because if you're considering them property, property gets taxed. So every year in North Carolina, you will get taxed on your car. No matter if it's a 15-year-old car, North Carolina wants their money on that every single year. Okay, Same thing with your house. You own your house, Okay, every single year you pay a property tax to your county on it. <coughs> Excuse me. In the slave trade compromise, okay, this is another compromise based on slavery. You notice there's a, there's an issue already with slavery. Hmm. Kind of solve uh, the Civil War with that one, but, you know, they could have solved it here. They don't. In the slave trade compromise, um, they're going to say no more bringing in slaves from Africa. The international slave trade is going to end in 20 years. So in 1807, no more international slaves. But remember what I pointed out to you guys. International slave trade might be dead, but you have now second, third, fourth generation slaves born here in America. So they're having kids, and you can trade them. You can trade your slaves. So you're still going to have slave trade going on. It's just not international slave trade. When the Founding Fathers are looking at this, they feel that this is um, fair. They also feel like... Um, Slavery might go out. You know, it's really expensive. Uh, not to say that people treat slaves well, because they certainly don't. But, I mean, they're thinking that the future is the machines. Sorry, I had to pause. I keep having to pause because I'm coughing. Sorry. So, um, the slave trade deal um, was a compromise. It was to allow slave owners to continue having slaves and to continue the trade. But this is also a northern thing. New York is a major slave trading area. That's a major port where slaves are coming in. So they can still bring in their money. They can still have money. Uh, but, you know, just know in the future you, you're going to have to be looking at something else. And so machines are really what's going to be coming. It's just we're not there yet. The Electoral College is also a compromise. Um, there's a lot of debate on how the president should actually be elected. You know, should they be elected for life? Should they be elected for four years? You know, so they come up with a lot of compromise. Should they be elected every year? And so the Electoral College is really about the president, and it's a compromise on the presidency. So people, you and I, we're going to vote in the popular election, popular people. And so we vote, and then our electors, which are our Senate and our House members, are then going to vote on who is actually going to be the president. And they do it in the Electoral College. And this is like those that extra step to the presidency. And you have to win the Electoral College. You do not have to win the popular vote. And so there have been plenty of times in, pre in, in our history where that has actually been true. Question 37 is how that Constitutional Convention is divided up. You got the Anti-Federalists and the Federalists. The Federalists believe, you know, in the U.S. government, they believe in a strong central government. The Anti-Federalists are against that. They're very much afraid that we'll be too much like Britain, and so they're going to stall on signing on the Constitution until a Bill of Rights gets added. 